He, we need that again. We need a God who can open up the Red Sea and cause us uh, to have a way, a dry path through it to escape our enemies. But, sir, sir, if the Lord is with us, why is us all happen? Where is the God of the Exodus? Is it all just a fairy tale that we had in our Bible? Well, you know, the response is interesting because if you look at it, God's response is, the God of the Exodus is alive and well. And in fact, guess what, Gideon? You're the new Moses. Everything God said to Moses back in Exodus chapter 3 to 6, he says to Gideon now. In fact, if we had time, we, and we will in future weeks look at, there are at least 16 to 18 parallels between Gideon and Moses. You begin looking for them. But it starts out with the statement, I've sent you. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out, out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? In Exodus chapter 3, God said to Moses, I will be with you and this will be the sign that it is I who have sent you. God has sent you. He has sent you. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. We have our commencement address from Jesus of Nazareth as he was facing the cross. And he said, you're all sent. Every one of us is, are, are sent ones. And we're sent in the very same way that the Father has sent the Son, his only begotten. And Gideon says, but Lord, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my family. He's reluctant to go on the assignment. But don't you see, that's exactly what Moses did. When God said to Moses, you're to go, Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He complained that he'd never been able to speak well. He's got like a speech defect. Who, you know, I'd never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you've spoken to your servant. I'm slow of speech and tongue. God does not say, oh, come on, Moses, believe in yourself. Uh, you know, Take a, a course in you know, rhetoric. You, you, you've got the capability. And what God says is, who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? I mean, notice that he doesn't just say, who makes him eloquent? I made you this way. I take full responsibility. That's what God's saying to him. You got a speech defect? You got a stutter? God's behind it. That's the good news. What else is the good news? He still intends this, he intends to use you like you are, just as you are. Because he makes his strength perfect in weakness. That's the whole lesson of Gideon. Gideon fights a countless innumerable host with an army of just 300 men. Why? To make the point that the strength isn't ours. It's his. It all comes from him. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Moses cries out, who am I? Why should you send me? Who am I that I should go to the Pharaoh and, and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God's answer is not who you are. It's who am I? And I am the God who will be with you. Surely I will be with you. God says it to Moses, I will be with you in answer to the question, who am I? He doesn't answer, who am I? He doesn't send Moses on a self-discovery uh, trip. It's who God is. And God is the God who called things that are not into being, and he is the God who will be with you. And if God is with you, the God who sent you is with you. He's the one who will make you sufficient for these things and will equip you. He will make his strength perfect in your weakness. Hudson Taylor, the great missionary statesman who spent 51 years in China, once was asked about his founding of China Inland Mission. They started 125 schools. They worked in 300 workstations all across China, all 18 provinces. He said, it seemed to me that God looked over the whole world to find a man who was weak enough to do his work. And when at last he found me, he said, ah, he is weak enough. He'll do. <laughs> That's what God does, the God who calls you. Gideon replied, if I've then found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it's really you who's talking to me. 
and here I want to close with this. I know we're getting late. But Woody Allen, you know, once uh, asked for a sign. It's, it's his typical irreverent comment, but I like it. He said, if only God would give me some clear sign, like making a large deposit in my name in a Swiss bank account. <laughs> you know, we, we want a sign that God is with us, and what's the sign we want? Well, that seems like a pretty decent sign, but, but Gideon wants a sign that it's you, and it's interesting, Gideon has it the exact opposite. It's not depositing a great sum in a Swiss bank account in my name. It's what Gideon is going to give to God and what God's going to do with it. The giving direction is the opposite. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my, actually in Hebrew it's my tribute. In other words, who's the real Lord of my life? The tribute that goes to the Midianites? Nah, it, this is now going to go to the one alone to whom it belongs, the one who deserves it. To set it before you, and the Lord said, I will wait until you return. Gideon went in. Gideon, who was living in a time of extreme privation, he prepared a young goat. This was not just a pretzel. This is a goat. 50 pounds or so would be typical weight. And an ephah of flour and made bread without least. An ephah of flour. We know an ephah, according to Zechariah 6, is big enough for a small person to get into. So we're talking about between 50 and 100 pounds of cake, uh, of, you know, of bread. I mean, this is a feast for whom? No man could possibly eat this. I don't care how hungry you are. And also broth in a pot. It happens to be a rare word, so we don't know the exact uh, capacity of it. But this astonishing generosity for one who probably had nothing gives it all to God. And what does God do? He receives it. And with fire coming up from the rock, devours it in a supernatural way, in a Moses-like way, with that great offering that began all of Israel's worship, when fire came from the very presence of God and consumed the offering in the days of Moses and Aaron. Here's now Moses, another Moses type of person, Gideon, having his ministry validated in the same way. But here's the one who will receive all that you were ever meant to give, all that education, all the investment of life, all the investment of those who sacrificed their lives. He's the only one who is worthy to receive it all. The woman who was at Jesus' feet, remember when Simon the Pharisee had him to dinner? Simon the Pharisee who just went through the perfunctories but a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town was at Jesus' feet and brought an alabaster jar of perfume, and as she stood behind him weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and then she wiped them with her hair and kissed them and poured perfume on them. And the Pharisee who had invited Jesus saw it. He said, if this man were a prophet, he'd know who's touching him and what kind of woman it is that she's a sinner. Simon, I have something to tell you, Jesus said. Tell me, teacher, he said, two men owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii, the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay back, so he canceled the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon said, I suppose the one with the bigger debt. You've judged correctly, Jesus said. And he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You gave me, you did not give me any water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I've entered hasn't stopped kissing my feet. You didn't pour oil on my head, but she's poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you her sins, which have been, have been forgiven, for she loved much, but he who has been forgiven loved little. Jesus is the one who alone is deserving of all that we have to give. If you don't have a goal in your life, a purpose that is worth dying for, you don't have one that's worth living for either. But if you have Christ as the one for whom you're living, if you, like Gideon, have been called to be sent by him to bring deliverance in whatever way or form he intends to be his ambassador, if you're the one with whom he will be accompanying and strengthening, then give it all for Christ. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength 
and honor and glory and praise.